Hello again. It's, it's been a little while. I've been on a road trip. I've been doing my own stuff. Uh, not many people watch these anyway, so it doesn't matter. But welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the nope ropes and danger noodles of the world. And by this I do mean uh, snakes, pool noodles with fangs uh, that everyone is so scared about. We're going to be talking about them. And I'm going to be trying to convince you that they aren't actually that bad and try and change your mindset on them if you are scared of them. And my little assistant here, his name's Emmanuel. Uh, he's gonna be coming along for the ride and this is my very poorly drawn version of a snake. Don't judge me, I'm not an artist, I am very cack handed. But as I said, I'm here to try and change your opinion on why these guys are actually quite cool and really, really interesting animals and actually aren't as bad as they seem and they just get a really bad rep from us people. Uh, and they deserve a lot more love and respect from us in general uh, because they aren't actually that bad. Before I get into more of the information about snakes and the backstory and just all that fun stuff that we're going to be doing, uh, could I just take one second to say uh, if you like this video, give it a like, give it a comment, uh, subscribe as well, it helps me out a lot, it helps push my video out in the algorithm, try and get as many people to see it as possible, um, but also just enjoy, thank you for clicking it, and again, subscribe, please, or do it, if you're not doing it for me, do it for Emmanuel, um, he will cry, he will be very upset if you do not. Okay, firstly, get your little thinking caps. I'll grab mine. Uh, ignore that it's a Kiwi Park one. I went to Queenstown recently. Get your thinking caps on. Uh, let's get rid of that now. I'm going to talk a little bit about the backstory of snakes. It's going to be quick fire because there's a lot that I can say about snakes and I want to get onto the more fun stuff with the silly and cool looking things rather than talking about a bit of a history lesson for you all. So firstly, there is thousands of different species of snake out there. There is so many different species of snakes in the world. And they've actually been here for over 100 million years. The snake has been here longer than the T-Rex has. And when this big ass meteor came in, exploded, boom, everything else, uh, the snake survived. It, and it's still here today. So just resilient little things. They literally live nearly everywhere in the world. Land, trees, ocean, they can do it all. Uh, they can swim around, they can climb trees, they can even jump from trees for some reason. So... They've just mastered every form of traveling. Some have amazing camo, bet you can't spot the one in here. I'll give you a second, but yeah, I lied. There isn't a snake in there, but there is one in here. So there you go. And as I said before, there's actually thousands of different snake species in the world, and only about 200 of them are actually lethal or can cause fatal injuries in uh, humans. So we give them a really bad rep for this little outcast little group of them compared to the however many thousands of species that can't kill or won't do any damage really to a human. And anyway, a lot of snakes will bite in self-defense, like they give us a lot of warning before they do. For example, the rattlesnake, it rattles its tail, and people still want to get close to it even though it is a very intimidating noise. And overall, snakes are just a really cool animal. They're just so interesting how they can move even though they don't have legs, and they can swim even though they don't have legs, and they can jump from trees when they don't have arms or legs to catch anything. They're just really, really cool animals, and again, if you still hate them after this video, there is no consequence to it, but I'll just call you your, your stubborn person. I don't know, and Samuel will agree. Won't you, Samuel? Okay, so firstly, let's have a look at some of the silly, goofy, weird-looking members of the species, uh, just to ease our way into the world of the snakes. So, uh, first off, we've got one called the Arabian Sand Boa. Uh, in my opinion, he is one of the weirdest looking animals I've seen in a long time and just derpy and silly looking. So if you could imagine a sock puppet or a kid's first attempt at drawing a snake, that is what you have here. It is just a stupid looking animal. He's not even venomous. He is pretty much harmless to people. He can bite, obviously the majority of snakes can bite, but he is so harmless, so stupid looking, so silly looking. I love him. He is one of the cutest looking things I've ever seen, but you cannot tell me there is a single brain cell functioning within his little skull there. So these guys are found in Western Asia and they are actually nocturnal, so they will always be sleeping during the day, active during the night. And the reason he has his eyes where he does on the top of his head, like this kind of weird little positioning of it, is because they will actually bury themselves in the sand, up until their eyes anyway, so literally it's just their eyes peeping out and that's how they chill for most of the day. The next up, I like to call this guy the Judgmental Shoelace. You can see why you're here. You can see why I say this. He just looks like he's judging everything I do and he's being very mean and 
he's gonna go off and say something behind my back to his other snake friends to say like look at this stupid little guy with his uh, hoodie on in 30 degree weather it is it is very hot in my room currently and i still have a jumper on so the actual name for these guys is the tree vine snake it's also known as the long-nosed vine snake as well. The reason his eyes look like this is actually because he has got horizontal pupils. This is, is very similar with a lot of different animals as well. It helps with different ways of seeing and it's just how they've adapted for their kind of environment. The judgmental shoelace can be found in Africa, Asia, and also South, North, and Central America. And as they are a tree-dwelling animal, they will always be in the tree, or the fancy word for it is arboreal. So as well as having a judgmental look that most parents will also have if their kid tells them they want to be a YouTuber when they grow up, uh, they also have lots of different subspecies within the tree vine snake species, which uh, is really sick because they actually come in lots of different colors and have lots of different patterns and also different shapes. Even though these guys are venomous, the majority of them are actually harmless to people, so we don't have to worry about them. The only thing we have to worry about is their deathly gaze as they are really disappointed in us all the time. And then the final silly little guy we're going to be looking at is the blunt-headed tree snake. You can see why it's called that. I like to think of these guys of just being scared shitless or that they've just heard something they shouldn't have and trying to keep it a secret. I, I would not trust this guy with any of my secrets. It looks like he is about to burst with the amount of pressure that he's putting into his, like, keeping his mouth shut. So these guys call wet forests their home in South and North America. And these guys, as well as the tree vine snake, are an arboreal species. I'm just throwing all the fancy words at you today. Uh, they're arboreal species, so they live in the trees again. Uh, they love that. They're nocturnal, so they sleep during the day, awake during the night. And they're about 80 centimeters long. So they're, again, they're not massive, but they can get quite long and they're quite thin. Again, these guys are mildly venomous. They don't really do much to people. They're not really dangerous or deadly or lethal at all to us. Uh, it might come up as like a little kind of a bit of a worse wasp sting sort of thing. But there is actually a reason for their eyes being as big as they are. It aids with the hunting process and allows them to have a better vision and better eyesight to hunt during the night and allows more light to enter their eyes for the light receptors to be able to kind of put an image in front of them. That's why our eyes dilate and things like that as well so we can get more light into our eyes. So now, a little bit of a change of pace. We're gonna be looking at cool snake species. Things that I love, they don't look real, and it's just amazing that they are actually alive and in this world. And the first one, I'm going to call it the Pokemon of today's uh, episode. Uh, this is the uh, Spiny Bush Viper. You cannot tell me this is real. Even Emmanuel doesn't believe it's real. But it just looks like a Pokemon, like with the spikes and the eyes, the shape of the head, everything. It doesn't look real, but it is 100% real. These guys are from Central Africa, and they are extremely venomous. Extremely venomous. They kill a lot of people if they do not get an anti-venom. It mostly eats and hunts small mammals, frogs, birds, lizards, things like that. And what's really interesting about them, which is very different to a lot of snakes that would, uh, say, lay eggs, is that they give birth to live young, which is really cool, really different, and it just adds to that mystical wow of it's a Pokemon, it does everything differently, and it just looks phenomenal. I love this thing. It's got to be one of my favorite animals, and I'm not the biggest fan of snakes. Like, I think they're cool, but this guy is, oh my god, it's so cool. The Malaysian blue coral snake, amazing to look at. Like, I always find it so cool when you find a blue animal or a blue thing in nature, because blue is actually the most difficult and rare color to ever form in nature. Um, and we're going to have a little bit of a science lesson with Toby. So get your science jackets on, get your glasses on, get your notebooks out, because I will explain why blue is actually really, really difficult to find in the wild. So as you can see here, you can see a color chart and a pigmentation chart of colors. You see the little blue area here? Well, that is very, very difficult and actually can't be formed by nature. So animals aren't able to form the pigment to absorb every other color and reflect blue. So they have to rely on physics to kind of merge colors together and the way it forms to shoot that color blue back out. So it is actually genetically impossible for animals to properly produce the color blue through their skin or any other way and they actually have to rely on other properties that do it for them. So it's just so cool whenever you do see blue because there's been a lot of, say, effort 
from the animal to get it to that color but obviously not effort because it's all genetic and it's just like growing up like i didn't put effort to get as tall as i am or to get to this age i'm just kind of surviving these guys are found in southeast of asia and a fun fact about them is that they actually have weirdly long venom glands and it's actually about a quarter of their body for some reason and a fun fact if you get a dose from these venom glands and the venom from this animal uh it causes paralysis so don't get bit by these don't go near them because it doesn't end good for you also paralysis is very different to most snakes uh, a lot of snakes don't tend to go down that route they tend to go down the route of not allowing you your blood to clot and form so you bleed out and that means that they can actually find you easier as well but they just decide to paralyze you uh, and also stop ever its prey. But you are in luck, because these guys normally run away. They're big scaredy cats. They're a bit of a pansy. Uh, they don't like staying nearby. They don't like threats. Uh, a lot of the time they will raise their red tail, which is a big sign of warning, as a lot of uh, brightly colored things in the world uh, tend to be dangerous, venomous, or can kill you, and they use it as a warning to say, get away, I don't want to do anything. But once they do that, they do normally run, unless there's no other option other than to bite you. And now that I've kind of warmed you into the idea of snakes actually being pretty cool and pretty uh, unique looking, uh, I'm going to get a baseball bat, hit you in the knees to get you back down, and talk about the lethal ones. So the ones that are really dangerous and really deadly. And uh, lethal can actually mean two different things. So first off, you have snakes that cause the most fatalities. And then you have snakes that have the most potent venom and most deadly venom in the world. So for category number one, with it being the snake that causes the most fatalities in the world, it is a thing called the saw scaled viper. Uh, reasons for this, it has got the most contact with people and is located in places in the Middle East uh, and uh, Asia and Central Asia and things like that. So uh, what is one of the biggest areas in the world that is located there? India. Uh, there's so many people in India, there's so many of these snakes, and there's a lot of human-animal interaction here. So that is why they kill so many people, because they're interacting with them the most. Another thing that the Soul Scale the Viper has going for it, is it is extremely, and I mean extremely aggressive. More aggressive than a mother bear when you take one of its young, sort of thing. They actually kill around 5,000 people annually in India alone, and that doesn't even count for, like, anywhere else they're located. So yeah and then we come to section number two where it is the most potent venom of a snake uh we have two extremely heavy hitties here it's like mike tyson and deontay wilder kind of having a fight here with how heavy these guys hit uh you have the inland taipan uh which is the has the most toxic venom flat out like it is the most toxic and potent venom out of all snakes so he takes the cake and it's there's a tiny amount and I don't I'll put the exact amount on the screen because I cannot remember off the top of my head but it is less than milligrams that need to enter your body to kill you so us mere little humans our pathetic little immune systems will not cope with that and then coming in second you've got a black mamba they've got extremely potent venom uh, they're also extremely aggressive but they do sometimes show a bit of a warning and where they get their name from is when they open their mouth all of their mouth is black so it is intimidating as hell if one of them is near you when they open their mouth. But that is a bit of a warning, so they won't just kind of like bang to you instantly, you know? But in conclusion, what I think we can learn from this whole video and looking at snakes in general, including Emmanuel here, who is my friend, uh, mainly because he is not alive and I drew him, but that snakes are a thing that need to be respected as among uh, all other animals in the world as well. But not all snakes are going to kill you and lots of places like hollywood and films and tv shows and netflix which is like everywhere that you can see films kind of demonize certain animals there are obviously bad ones in the world and there are ones that will kill you and are dangerous to you but don't clump them all together sort of thing because with there being over 3,000 different species of snake and barely any of them actually being deadly or harmful to humans uh, i didn't even talk about some of them actually there, there's some uh, pythons and stuff and uh, boa constrictors that would kill us um so take away what you're on from this video honestly there's loads that can kill you loads that i won't um if you're scared of snakes you're scared of snakes i hope i changed your mind about some of them but i think they're really cool you just gotta respect i think the lesson learned from this video is respect animals uh, don't get too close to them unless you are a trained professional but even then um just be careful around them if you guys like this video uh, please 
give it a like thumbs up a comment any ideas stuff you wanted for me to talk about next um like comment subscribe it'll help me but also emmanuel will be much happier if you do so um thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one